Hey, my name's Larry. I'm with Under the Bridge Flies. And I am going to tie a bleeding black slump buster. Uh, it's a UV bleeding black bleeding black. <laughs> Can't even say it. How am I gonna tie it, right? Okay, so um, I watch a lot of YouTube. Um, I learned to tie a lot of flies on YouTube um, before I decided to make some videos myself. And one of the biggest things that um, I really don't like on a lot of the videos is they don't give you all the information, hook size, product names, you know, stuff like that, you know, to help you out. Um, so hopefully um, I'm going to make some informative videos here for y'all and hopefully uh, we can tie some flies and everybody will like these. Okay, so it's a UV bleeding black slump buster. Um, we're going to start off with the Daiichi 1710 size 4 and pretty much size four I mean it's just a regular size four there's no uh, X's on it um, you can tie these in a lot of different sizes you know your slump busters you know they're really effectively good fly um, mine has just a little bit different pattern so um, I thought I'd share it with you um, anyway I'm putting on a cone head and it's going to be a gold these are Wapsi Wapsi product and they have really good products so you know um, hairline wapsy really good stuff we'll get our hook started here and i'm going to wrap this with a 0 0.025 lead wire snap that off and this thing around. There we go. Okay. My next step is I am going to coat the front of this hook shank with uh, some Zappa Gap um, or super glue, whatever you want to use. A lot of guys like just uh, tying in, you know, their thread around their lead wire. Zappa gap takes two seconds to put it on slide that forward everything stays in place and I don't have to waste a bunch of time going back and forth on My lead wire with my thread. It's just a time saver for me and I mean If you're tying as many flies a day that I am you really need to save as much time as possible, right? Okay, the next step is adding you a piece of wire and uh, I'm using an orangish red wire. Uh, it's actually, I'll show you this thing. It's a Spirit River. It's the, what I'm using is a 28 gauge, but I got this Spirit River makes these little containers for your wire. Um, they come with six different colors in them. This is a 28 gauge. They make, you know, like I said, different sizes, but this is a real handy thing. And like I said, it comes from Spirit River. I got that on eBay, so you know it was like nine bucks or something, but well worth it. You can rewrap, you know, wire in there. So I'm going to start this wire right behind the lead and on this side of the hook. I know, and I'll just put that on there, wrap it down good and tight to the back shank of the hook, and bring your thread forward. All right, the next thing I am using is called a flash bend bait fish brush. Here's UV black, bleeding black, two inch bait fish brush. Now you get I mean, two really nice strips of this brush in each package. And they come in a lot of different colors. I got olive, white, black, brown. Um, for your streamer patterns and everything, this is really good stuff here. But I've incorporated it into my slump buster here. So inside of this, if you never used one, there's a piece of wire um, that 
holds all that together right in the middle of that and we're just going to find that piece of wire here pull this material back a little bit and I want to just put the piece of wire just right in the edge of that cone head we're going to give that a couple wraps there and then okay now you want to just go ahead and come back you know three eighths a cone head will work and just wrap that down real good and tight um, I didn't mention it but I'm using unithread this is a two uh, six o unithread in black it's uh, I suggest you use a six o at least on these because I like to cinch them down real tight so I'm going to find the back of my hook bend here and I'm going to take my scissors and you want to get your scissors way up in there because to cut that wire you don't want to do it with the tip because it will blow your scissors up and then you can't cut what you need to. Alright, so just separate that, pull it down. It doesn't stay down too good so, you know, just pull it down the best you can. Give a couple of you can see how it just pops right back up there so <laughs> all right um next step real simple uh rabbit strip i use hairline dubbing incorporated magnum strips for these anything over size four i use the magnums on uh, you can get the regular strips but these are really really good um i've tried other rabbit strips i've used a lot of different products these are the best in my opinion they, I mean, really nice, big, bushy. I mean, these things, nice and thick, great color. You know, they don't fall apart in the shed, I guess. <laughs> so we're going to snip off, snip off a little off the end here. So you got a little bit of bare material there. Uh, this rabbit strip's just so slick, you know, it's kind of hard. It doesn't get a good tight tie down. If you do it, you know, without stripping that off a little bit. And see how we're going to just shove that kind of in the end of that. Take a loose wrap, a couple loose wraps around it. Make sure we're good and straight on the back of our hook shank. You know, you want this thing to be setting. You know, and then just, we're just going to go ahead and just, just tighten. As tight as you can. And again, we're going to come back. Not quite a cone head on this one. And there we go. All right, so now we're gonna cut our tail here. Um, of course, if you had, you know, pike fishing, that might be a good tail for them. Uh, trout, not so much. <laughs> so what I do, rule of thumb, is a hook length. Um, bring my scissors up there I mean get it close uh, some guys like their tails longer some guys like their tails shorter I mean it's just preference you know but I like mine a hook length you know maybe just a hair a bit longer get some good movement in that tail but not a lot you know I've fished with stuff with you know real long tails before and it seemed like, you know, the fish would bite the tail, the fish would bite the, you know, and I wouldn't never catch the doggone fish, especially when you get into the smaller fish, you know, because, I mean, a small trout is still going to bite this thing. And so, you know, about a hook is more than enough, gives good action on this. So now let's uh, bring our wire forward here. So my wire I mean this is pretty heavy wire that I'm using so it'll stand up straight to where I can find my point that I'm going to cross over into my hair here my rabbit fur rather and take your scissors and you can just use the point of your scissors and you know separate that wet your finger you know and it'll help hold all that forward for you you know but you want to get you a nice clear area down through there um, don't want to trap you know all your rabbit fur and all your brush there if you can help it all right so when you're doing this take your finger and turn your rabbit strip you know turn it clockwise towards you and when you start this 
because that will get that piece of rabbit strip under, under there without it bending over and doubling on you and you don't want it to do that you'll get a better lay down on your rabbit strip if you just turn that a little bit toward you alright so now we're just going to kind of wiggle this thing through all this brush down here and like I said you want to least fibers as possible you know get caught up in there I mean you're not going to get them all you, if you want to sit there for a day and a half you know doing it then you can get them all but you ain't never going to do it and I don't have time to try to get them all because I mean I'm tying a hundred flies a day <laughs> all right so get that good and tight there give it a little tug and a little wiggle now I'm going to show you a little trick here real quick. Um, I got plenty of wire here, you know, to be able to pull on this thing fairly good and all that. So, but you know, you get down there to short wire and you don't want to throw it away because you still got plenty to use. You got these uh, little hackle pliers. Everybody's got them if you're tying, you know. I'm going to show you a little trick here. If you take this hackle plier and just put it on the end there and then just spin that thing I mean you can really torque on that you know and get that good and tight and it won't slip off on you like I said just you know clip that thing on there and give it a turn around there and I mean you got heck of a deal there you can really tighten this wire up that way you know, so you know, we're going to get bring this back through again Again, we're going to try to get most of these fibers out of the way because we're going to trap as least amount as possible. Again, let's make sure all this stuff gets down through there. And then we're just going to give it that a good and, you know, kind of wiggle it a little bit as you're doing. And it's going to, you know, the, when you wiggle that, it just makes it embed that even more deeper into that rabbit. So, and then we're just going to hold this good and tight and bring it around and then back up again and then we're just going to capture this with our thread and give that a good pull and give that a good pull and then we can just spin this right off of there see there it goes <laughs> took a second but we got it all right so your next step is your crosscut rabbit? Um, some guys don't use crosscut on these. They uh, just leave, you know, the regular rabbit, you know, long enough, and then they wrap it around, pull it back, wrap it around, pull it back. <clears throat> that's fine. I mean, I if that's what you're going to do, that's what you're going to do. But I think you get a better fly using the crosscut, and for sure, you're going to get a what the the way I do it anyway um I don't have no thread showing um, I know I don't I don't have a big chunk of magnum you know up there to tie in behind that bead head so it just makes it easier to use crosscut and honestly crosscut ain't that expensive so why not use it all right so you're going to take this um trim off you know because you tie in better um you get a better tie in when you do that and there is a front and a back to this so and this is you know the hairline you know product again so um, anyway if you take the tip of that and just push it just a little bit under that cone head bring your thread back about eighth of an inch and pull forward and do that again and pull forward oops and don't break your thread though but <laughs> And you like that that's what not to do sorry about that but it happens it normally doesn't happen um, I just pulled a little bit too much I knew better than that but you know anybody that says they never break thread on a fly they don't tie flies because <laughs> just one of those things that happens you know with guys a lot and I'm getting low on this roll too so it could have got caught up there so anyway um, 
we're just going to go ahead and restart this thread. Yeah, see, I'm losing traction on that, so good thing we're getting close to the end. But anyway, as I was saying, if you pull forward, you know, and let that run around that bead, you know, it or that cone head, it's pulling that, it's sucking it all inside the cone there. So your, you know, your product's going to go up underneath of there, and you won't be able to see it. And then you're just going to take a couple wraps with this. Pull it back as you're going. Make sure get it pulled back. And then when you bring this one around, try to get it to pull forward as you're going and it'll slip inside this cone. See what I'm doing there? And break the rabbit, you know, as you're doing it too, because that would believe what I just did. And then you're just gonna capture that real quick. And again, and then we are going to just go ahead and trim this one off. And then we'll just make a couple more nice wraps there. But you can see all that thread is going to go inside of that cone head and that's what you want to do even when you whip finish it which is what we're doing now it's going to slide inside of that cone head so when you're finished you're going to have a nice I mean see there you can't even hardly see the thread so you know what the fish does if you get the thread outside of the cone head the fish don't care really <laughs> you know um, even if you're using like a red thread you might want to come outside the cone head right here and give yourself a little red collar you know um, on this fly would look really really good I got some red right here so we'll just take it around real quick and but you can see you know how good that fly is going to look and everybody knows if it's red that fish likes it so but anyway um, my next thing when you're doing this if you look around your fly you usually find a place to where your hair isn't quite real tight and there might be a little gap in between you know this is a pretty tight fly so you know we did a real nice job on that even though we broke the thread so if you can't find one go to the bottom of the fly and tilt your fly down just a little bit you know gravity see we got a little bit I don't know if you can see that we got a little bit right there so if I hold that hair back we're going to put some zappa gap inside of this thing um, some guys got the little needle, you know, which would be really great now that I think about it, but I don't, so this is how I'm doing it. And you can see that soak in there. I mean, it just fills the inside of that fly. I mean, a little squeeze gets you two or three to four drops in there. Um, doesn't bother with the top of the fly, but that zappa gap is going to really seal this fly up for you so and we're just going to comb that out of the way fluff it up a little bit and there is your bleeding black uv sump buster i really like these colors on that i mean you can see that look at the reds and purples i mean Man, fish love the red and purple, so, and it's UV as well. I mean, this thing is going to catch some serious fish, I do believe. So, um, yeah, we're just going to. All right. Well, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed my video. Um, I'll try to make some more here in the near future.
I appreciate you watching. Um, if you would like to purchase some of these flies or you need can't find the materials that you need to tie these flies, give me a yell. I'm on Facebook at Under the Bridge Flies. I'm on Instagram, Under the Bridge Flies. Or, you know, just give me a text or give me a call or, you know, um, I'm always willing to answer questions from anybody. Um, I do a lot of uh, research on flies all over the country and everything, you know, so I know a lot of fishing reports for sure. But uh, give me a holler and uh, we'll hook you up with some of these flies. I mean, I sell a really good fly tied just like ease without the broken string. And I uh, sell them halfway cheap too, so guys can actually afford them, you know. So um, anyway, give me a holler. Thank you for watching.